someone today that you could encourage this morning. Glad that you all can be here. Let's take our hymnals that are there in front of you, a blue hymnal, and if you would, please turn to number 157. We'll start this morning by singing about the love of God. And once you find your place there, if you can, would you stand with me? Let's sing the love of God. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with him. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. Fifty-seven on the second. When years of time shall pass away, and earthly thrones and kingdom, when men shall be refuse to pray on rocks and hills and mountains, call God's love so sure. Will and every man ascribe by trade to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the soul contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measured. Let's turn all the way back to 786. This is one big hymnal, isn't it? Number 786. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings. Let's sing it now. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. the third. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings that cannot buy your reward in heaven or your name on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged.
discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings. See what God hath done. Amen. Well, we are a blessed people, aren't we? It is good to be here today. Welcome to Truth Baptist Church. It's our pleasure to have you with us, whether you're visiting for the first time or just have recently started coming or whether you've been here for a long time. It's our joy uh, to have you here. And my wife and I, we were gone last Sunday and celebrating 20 years of marriage. Praise the Lord for that. Thank you for allowing us to be gone like we were. We enjoyed our time away and are glad to be back with all of you together. I've been talking to a lot of different people today, and as I've been talking to them, people kind of keep staring at my eye a little bit. And uh, I don't know what happened, but I woke up Friday morning and I had one of those kind of, you know, capillary bursts on this side of the white of my eye. So I'm scaring everybody as I'm talking to the pastor. Are you okay? Is everything all right? I don't know what happened. I woke up like that. Maybe I got real loud while I was sleeping and Heather just kind of, you know, took care of it and uh, that might have happened. No, I don't think so. I don't know what happened, but uh, I am okay. I don't feel bad at all. Everything's fine. It's just uh, that corner of my eye got uh, something happened to it, but I'm all right. And I'm glad to be with you this morning. We're looking forward to what God is going to do here today. I did want to mention uh, before I pray I see the proud new daddy back there, Brandon Garnett, and if you didn't get the word already, Colton Bishop Garnett was born Wednesday night. Praise the Lord for a healthy little baby, uh, eight pounds, six ounces, 20 and a half inches long. Now for the Garnetts, that's kind of small, you know, you know, I was expecting at least 22 inches or so, but uh, anyway, I'm glad that Brandon's here. We're praying for Tova as she continues to spend time with the little guy and her parents are in town and they're uh, going to be there for a little while. Her mom's going to stay into September and as a matter of fact we're going to wait a little while to bring meals over until after her parents have both left. We will still do that uh, next month but we'll wait until after her mom has left. That We've talked with them and that's probably the best way to go about that but we are so happy for you all and uh, now they got uh, the little girl Ella right up here and uh, and little Colton and she loves her little Colton and uh, and then I talked with Brad uh, his sister had was it last night Brad that your sister had her baby and uh, so he's a proud uncle here today and there's a baby right on up here little Max and he's growing he's eating right now as I'm talking and uh, eating in church boy I, I like that those things go together don't they well, amen. Baptist church especially, right? That's right. Amen. Well, let's pray, and then we'll get started this morning. Father, thank you for the time that we have to be together here, and we rejoice in our, our meeting together. We pray, Lord, that you would lead, guide, and direct in this service. Thank you for the family that's here at Truth Baptist Church. We are indeed the family of God, and I pray that everyone here, Lord, would feel like family. Thank you for those who are with us here today, and uh, Lord, I pray that everyone would feel welcome. Uh, most importantly, Lord, I pray that your word would speak to us. And I pray that you would reign supreme and that your Holy Spirit uh, would have, have the authority in all that's happening here. I do pray that if there might be somebody who does not know you as Lord and Savior, that they'd come to that all-important decision today and that they would turn to you, trust in you, and be saved. Uh, we ask that you would allow that to take place. But Lord, we love you and we thank you for who you are and what you're doing and what you'll continue to do here. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm going to have our ushers come forward, and as they do, we want to welcome any of you who are visiting here today <clears throat> for the first time, and I know that we do have uh, a couple who are here visiting. And uh, so if you are visiting here today for the first time right now as our ushers make their way down the aisle, would you just go ahead and uh, slip your hand up? We want to know who you are, and we want to give to you uh, a packet of information. And with that information, you'll see a booklet and a visitor welcome card and a pin. 
and we encourage you, just go ahead and fill out all the information on that visitor welcome card, if you would, and in just a moment as the offering plate comes by, uh, we want to encourage you to put that in the offering plate. We also have uh, boxes out here in the foyer, and we encourage you, if you uh, would like to give that way, you can do that or put your visitor card in either of those boxes. Uh, let me just make mention of a few things, if I can. Uh, you'll see it there. We've been talking about it, but in the bulletin, if you're following along and paying attention, uh, in September, we have some big Sundays, and one of them is going to be on Sunday, September 19th. We're going to have what we call First Responders Sunday. Uh, maybe you know a first responder who's a friend or a family member or a neighbor. Maybe they work uh, in emergency services or uh, fire, EMS, or for the sheriff's office or a police department. Encourage them and invite them to come here and to be here in uniform if they're able to be. Uh, we want to honor all of those uh, who are here with us that day, and we're going to do that. In addition, we're going to have the sheriff of our county, uh, Sheriff David Hines, as well as the fire chief, who I've just recently gotten to know, Jethro Pylan. And uh, we have some great servants here in our community that we want to honor, uh, men who know the Lord. I'm glad that we're not only under good men, but saved men who know the Lord Jesus Christ. And that really is, is a huge blessing in this day and time. And uh, these men know the Lord, and they're going to be here. Uh, Captain Terry Sullivan, who's our good friend, will be here as well. And a special guest, Vinny Amadeo, who was on the ground there at 9 11 uh, 20 years ago and he's going to give his first-hand account of what happened in the events that took place that day it'll be a great sunday remember that and then the sunday before that on september 12th will be our faith promise sunday all of september we're going to be welcoming in different missionaries and on that particular sunday we're going to uh, consider faith promise and our giving to missions throughout the year uh, be here for that we want to make sure that you make it a priority to come and be here on that sunday i'm going to ask our ushers to come at this time Remember the other things that are forthcoming that you'll see there in the bulletin, and we want to be uh, prepared and ready for all of it, and we hope that you will, and we'll trust uh, that you'll look forward to all that is ahead. It's time to collect the morning offering. As I mentioned, you can give in the offering plate today, but you can also, if you'd like to, give in the boxes out in the foyer. Uh, we also have an online giving option that you can find at truthbaptistchurch.com, and you can give through the online secure giving portal there. Richard Johnson, would you pray for the offering, please?
Let's take our hymnals together, please. Turn to 577. 577. In times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Let's sing about the Lord and his provision in times of difficulty. Number 577. In times like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times like these, you need the Bible. In times like these, is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Let's sing the last. In times like these, I have a Savior. In times like these, I have an anchor, I'm very sure, I'm very sure. My anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Very sure, my anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Amen. I hope you can get to the point in your life and you're there now where you can speak of the Lord as your rock uh, very personally. I like that third verse, how it changes to a very personal note. Let's go now and sing our chorus. It's on the back of your bulletin. If you'd find your bulletin there on the back of your bulletin. We've been singing it all month long. Oh yes, oh yes, I'm a child of the king. Let's sing verse one. Once I was clothed in the rags of my sin. Once I was clothed in the rags of my sin. Wretched and poor, lost and lonely within. But with wondrous compassion, the king of all kings. around you this morning if you're able to get around. It's good to see everybody here. Children, you can be dismissed to junior church.
right, let's find our way back to our seats. We're going to sing the chorus through. Oh, yes, oh, yes, I'm a child of the king. Sing it with me, everyone. Oh, yes, oh, yes, I'm a child of the king. His royal blood now flows in my veins. And I, who was wretched and poor, now can sing. Praise God, praise God, I'm a child of the King. Good singing, thank you. You may be seated. of home sick for a country to which I've never been before no sad goodbyes will they be spoken and time won't matter anymore Beulah It's just a few more days to labor And then I'll take my heavenly flight Beulah land, I'm longing for you And someday on thee I'll stay I see the light, I hear the singing, a brand new song of joy divine. My heart rejoices just in knowing that soon these pleasures will all be mine. Someday on the Austin, there my home shall be eternal. Beulah land, sweet Beulah land, Beulah land, sweet.
Amen. That was a blessing, wasn't it? Praise the Lord. I'm looking forward to that day as well when we go to Sweet View. You got that chick. Thank you. Any children that need to go back to junior church now can make their way back. And we are in Hebrews chapter number 11 this morning. Hebrews chapter number 11. For the next three weeks, I'm going to preach messages that I believe will be a help, particularly in response to the fear that we see in society today. They're really not messages about fear itself, uh, but it's about what I believe should overcome the fear that we as people sometimes have and experience. Being fearful within and of itself isn't always wrong. Uh, sometimes it's helpful. Uh, I think there should be a healthy fear of certain things so that we don't do foolish things, if that makes sense. Uh, so being fearful within and of itself is not wrong particularly, but we understand that a spirit of fear and not trusting God can quickly become problematic. And I think we live in days and times in which we're seeing that become more and more the norm. People just living and going about life with a spirit of fear as opposed to what God has told us to do and, and instructed us to live. So we're in Hebrews chapter number 11. I want to read verses 1 through 3. If there was ever a passage that helped to, uh, uh, helps us to understand what faith is, it's this passage. And the thought today is this, faith over fear. Oh, we might grow fearful from time to time, but the Lord has called us to live lives of faith. The Bible tells us the just shall live by faith. So we're in Hebrews chapter 11. I want to read the first three verses. That'll be the only verses we'll use as our primary text. But there the Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So think with me for a few moments this morning about that very thought, faith over fear. And let's ask the Lord for his help today. Father, I ask that you would help us. We can grow fearful. And I pray, Lord, that we would understand where our fear should stop and our faith should begin. Sometimes it's hard to balance that out. But we are people of faith. And Lord, I pray that faith would define us, not fear or not some other quality, uh, not what the world sometimes, Lord, gets caught up in and not the anxiety and the anxiousness and the concerns of this life. But Lord, I pray that we would be faith-filled people Living the faith life, that's what you've called us to do, and I pray that that's what we would do. Live lives of faith. Help us to understand what that looks like and how that's presented here in this passage. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I don't know if you realize it or not, but the phrase fear not is used 63 separate times in God's word. And if you were to add to the phrase fear not, be not afraid along with other variations of commands to fear God and to avoid fearfulness or anxiousness in this life, there's about 365 or 366 mentions of this idea to not be fearful in the Word of God. That's one for each day of the year. As a matter of fact, I think you can find some devotionals that are on that very subject of fearing not. Uh, a different truth in God's Word for every day of the year. And I, I, I know I was just looking at uh, a resource online that I found like that, and maybe we could find something like that that would help us. Because we're human, and we do have things that concern us. Uh, I know that we all are different in our personalities and different in our upbringing, but some of us might tend to be a little more fearful than others. I understand that... Uh, you know, children, your children can be as different uh, as night and day. I remember growing up, I was 
more fearful as a child than I became as an adult. When I was young, I was afraid of stuff. I mean, I was scared. And I look at it as just being a wise, beyond my years, little toddler. That's all it was. Uh, I think it was the Red Hut or the Green Hut that I was a part of for my preschool years up in Quantico. My dad was a Marine, and uh, I think one particular uh, day uh, they brought in a witch around October, or what looked like one, black makeup, and they wanted to make sure the kids weren't scared, and they told the kids for weeks, I think maybe even months beforehand, now this, this is going to be the teacher, she's going to have this dark makeup, but it's just a teacher, you don't have to be scared, and sure enough, the day that she came in with all that scary makeup, all the kids seemed to be just fine, except for me, I screamed and ran as far as I could. I didn't want anything to do with that, all right? And uh, I just call that a wise little kid. I don't really call that a fearful kid. I also remember sometime later, uh, Camp Lejeune uh, there, there was a pond on base where my dad would take us fishing. And I'll never forget, for whatever reason, this particular pond on base had an alligator in it. And uh, up, you know, towards Jacksonville, North Carolina, there's typically not that many alligators but I don't know if someone led a pet alligator into this pond and he just lived there. But he was pretty good, at least six feet you know, in size, six, seven foot alligator. And uh, I think I've shared this story before, so if you've heard it, bear with me. If not, just uh, listen for the fun of it, all right? Uh, we're all fishing and all of a sudden my dad says, hey look, look over there, look at that alligator. And sure enough, here's this alligator in the pond and he's coming straight at us. I mean straight at us, just right through. He's not, he doesn't, he doesn't look like he's afraid of anything. And uh, my dad says, I think he's after our worms. And in my elementary age brain, I thought, he's not after our worms. He's after me. And uh, so he said, quick, get your lines in. We got our lines in. As soon as I reeled my line in, I started running for the van. I mean, I just ran. I thought for sure my, my dad and my brother would be right there with me. I just kept running, and after a while, I looked back, and they weren't there. They weren't with me. And I looked back, my dad's got a stick like this going after the alligator, and I, my little brother Ben was probably three or four years old, and he's got a little stick behind my dad like that. <laughs> and here's me, the chicken, running for my life, because I don't want to be alligator lunch. You know what I mean? Uh, so we're all different in different ways, and we can all be fearful uh, of different things. Maybe you were a fearful child. Maybe some of that fear has carried over into your adult life. Uh, again, I think sometimes there's wisdom in being cautious about things. And it's not fear itself that's the issue or the problem, but it's what the Bible talks about when it says a spirit of fear. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, you should see this on the screen, uh, but it says there uh, uh, that we have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's what God gives to his people. Uh, not a fearful spirit, but a spirit that says, I trust in God and because my God is powerful and my God is loving and my God is sound, I can have that very same spirit. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 17. Uh, this is a very helpful verse. Uh, but here it's one of the places in the New Testament where that command, fear not, is given. And there in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 17, the Bible says, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And remember in Revelation, John, the apostle, he's been given a vision. And he's given a vision of the Lord. That's the first thing he sees. And there's a great description of the Lord given to us here. And it, I won't, you don't have to turn there, but it says in verse 14 of the same chapter, his head and his hairs were white like wool. My hair is turning white, so I'm just becoming more Christ-like, okay? And uh, it's white like wool and white as snow. And his eyes were a flame of fire and his feet like undefined brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars <clears throat> and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead 
And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. That's an encouraging message for all of us. The Lord is just reminding us, and this is a message to churches in John's day, and it extends to churches today in the church age as well. Don't be afraid. The Lord says, fear not. I'm the first and I'm the last. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You do not need to be afraid. Now, just take that at face value, and that should put all of our hearts at ease this morning. Everything begins with God, and everything ends with God. And he says so in his word. I'm the first. I'm the last. And anything and everything that happens in between is at his divine direction. Now that alone should help us to understand that we don't need to have a spirit of fear. But look around us today. I think the spirit of fear is alive and well. I think there's many who are living with a spirit of fear rather than with power and a love and with a sound mind. But the Lord has given us another word. It's the word faith. And rather than living with fear, we've been called to live not a fearful life, but the faith life. And that's the life that all of us should strive for, a life filled with faith. And I think we see a great description of that right here in our passage. And I just want to ask that question. What are some scriptural motivations for choosing to live with faith over fear? We have biblical reasons for why we need to choose faith and be people of faith. What are they? Well, here's the first thought this morning, and it's this. Faith gives assurance. If you want to be a person who is confident and assured in the Lord, you must live with faith. We all must choose that faith life. Look with me again at verse 1, where the Bible tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And uh, our Faith Connor here today, this is all about you, this message here. So she's just feeling special today. I was hoping she'd be here this morning. And, uh, but this is what it's all about. Faith. It is what? It is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. The word substance in this passage is the Greek word hypostasis or hypostasis. It means this, support assurance, uh, or confidence. So primarily, it is the idea of having support, and as a result of that support, that gives us the assurance and the confidence that we're striving for or desire in this life. Uh, you understand that if we're going to live by faith, we need to trust the support system that we have in place. We need to trust the pews that we're sitting in here uh, to hold us up. Uh, we need to trust uh, this building to stay intact. Uh, we just need to have faith that where we are and what we're doing gives us the support we need to be sustained. Uh, that's what the Bible's speaking of here when it says substance, the substance of things hoped for. Uh, I want to ask this question. Are you an assured, confident Christian because of the support that God has promised you? Because I want to guarantee you something. You have it. You have it. You have support that you can rely on. Um, I didn't even tell him I was going to do this, but Trent, why don't you come up here? I want to do something with you real quick, okay? And he's my son, so I better be able to trust him. What do you think? Uh, this is a very simple illustration, okay? All right. I'm going, to, I'm going to fall back. I did not warn him I was doing this, I promise you, but I hope this gets the point across. Uh, I'm going to fall backwards. I'm going to have my arms like that. And Trent, you have to catch me, okay? He's a, he's a, str <laughs> he's a strong young lad, and I believe he can do it. It's, all, it's not about whether or not he can do it. It's whether or not I trust him to do it, okay? That's what it all comes down to. So the question is, can he do it? He's more than capable of doing it. I know I'm kind of hefty, but he can handle me. He can handle me. 
And uh, I've, I've tussled with him in the pool. Trust me, he can handle me. The question is, do I trust him to catch me? Well, here it goes. All right? This is what faith is all about. Maybe I should ask him first. Trent, <laughs> can I trust you? Okay, that was a very confident yes. Here we go, ready? Count me down, three, two, one. Oh, very good, all right, thank you. Good job, good job. All right, that's faith right there. That's what it comes down to. Trusting in the support that says it's there. Trusting in the support that is in place. Now, if we will do that, we can live with full faith and assurance and confidence for whatever life throws our way. And I want to promise you, while Trent's a very trustworthy young man, you can trust God even more than you can trust him. You can trust God more than anything or anyone. We can be confident people. We can be assured people because of the one we're placing our faith in. You see, assurance is not based in who we are, what we can do, or what we have our possession uh, in, but it's based on the faith we have in the one and only true, all-powerful God. And when you know the authentic God, you can have an authentic faith. Today, there are people whose faith is becoming very real. We all know what happened and is continuing to take place in Afghanistan. We pray for those people over there. We pray for folks who are right now living an authentic life of faith that has never been more authentic. The last report I read, and I don't know how true these reports are or are not, so don't quote me on them specifically, but the last report that I heard from a news source was that the Taliban uh, where it's going to different villages and different places where they know Christians are, and now they're checking everyone's smartphones, and if there is a Bible app on the smartphone, uh, they are killing those people. Now, that's an authentic life of faith right there. And that's just one aspect of what is taking place or what is reported to be taking place right now. And I hear these things, and I think to myself, yeah, here we are in Mechanicsville, Virginia, a place where you think it's a far different world than what is happening over there right now. But is it really? I don't know that it's all that different, to be honest. Oh, we don't have someone coming to check if we have a Bible app on our phone. We're not having someone come in here to check that we have Bibles on our laps, but I'm just simply saying this. If we say we have faith, it's something that becomes very real. It's something that we live, and it's something that we live day in and day out because we know that we can trust God come what may. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6 says this, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, do you believe that this morning? I hope you do, because that's a promise from God. And we can put confidence in that promise, that he which hath begun a good work in you, he's going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He's going to bring it to full fruition. He's going to bring it full term. And the work that the Lord is doing in us, whether we realize it at the time or not, is a good work. And the Bible says that he will complete it, he will perform it, he will accomplish it according to his will. Now, I've given you some great things to think about, not because I said them, but because God's word gives them. And knowing that the Lord is the first and the last, knowing that he is with his children, those of us who've trusted in him, doing a good work, and is going to perform that good work until the day of Jesus Christ, let's be real honest with ourselves for a moment. What do we have to worry about? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, but pastor, life is dramatically changing before our very eyes. Has God changed? No. Yes, but I'm not sure what the rest of this year is going to look like. 
God knows. We can put our faith in Him and keep our faith in Him. And even when it seems like things are going in a wrong direction in this world, uh, remember something. <clears throat> God has it all planned out. <laughs> I heard it said this way, things aren't falling out of place, things are falling into God's plan. We have to change our perspective and realize what's happening. God knows, God's in control, and we can trust Him. And if we can trust God for our salvation, we had better be able to trust Him about everything else. We can trust the Lord about the home that we were born into and the family that we've been given. We can do that. God wanted you to have the family that you had. <coughs> God wanted you to be born to the parents that you were born to. God wanted you to give birth to the children that you gave birth to. I promise you, he, he really did. All of this is by God's design, and either we accept it by faith or we reject it. For the time being, God gave you the job and has given you the job that he wants you to have and the boss that he wants you to work for. For the time being, I know that changes. But right now, God has you where he wants you. The physical appearance and the personality traits that you have, God gave you those for a specific reason. When you look at yourself in the mirror, accept it that, that God made you exactly what he wanted you to be. The color of your hair, the color of your eyes, the shape of your face, the shape of your body, yes. God gave you what he wanted you to have. There's a reason why he gave you that. And we trust that. We believe that. We must help everyone who knows the Lord to understand this. Help your children to understand this. Help those amongst your church family to realize this. Maybe we've been given a certain disease, or maybe it's not necessarily a disease, but an ailment that we deal with. God wanted you to have it. Paul prayed three times that the Lord would remove his thorn in the flesh. And what did God say to Paul? He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. You might have an ailment. Oh, it's not going to take your life tonight or tomorrow, but it's just something that you live with. It's your thorn in the flesh, but through that thorn in the flesh, God can be greater glorified. You can trust him with that. Maybe you've been through an awful experience or an unfortunate circumstance. With an authentic faith, we can be absolutely certain that God is in control and that he is working all things together for good to them that love him and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Faith gives us assurance. Number two, and I'm going quickly, faith gives a good testimony. Look at verse two with me. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Faith not only gives you a personal assurance, but it gives you a great testimony with those who are observing your life. There's a very good testimony that you're going to have with those who are watching you if you live that faith each and every day. And Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 1 tells us, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor than silver and gold. So a good name, a good reputation should be very important to all of us. You know how we achieve that? We achieve that by living with faith. People can see in us that our hope is in something beyond this life. And our hope is not in man. And we're not all concerned about the things that are happening around us or in our world but we know that we can trust God. And because of that, we're given a good report. In 1893, engineer George Ferris built a machine that bears his name, the, Fer the Ferris Wheel. And when it was finished, he invited a newspaper reporter to accompany him and his wife for the inaugural ride. It was a windy July day, so a stiff breeze struck the wheel with great force right as it slowly began its rotation. Talk about timing for the inaugural ride of this Ferris wheel. And despite the wind, the wheel turned flawlessly, and after one full revolution, Ferris called for the machine to be stopped so that he, his wife, and the reporter could step out. And in braving that one full revolution on the wind-blown Ferris wheel, each occupant demonstrated genuine faith. Now, Mr. Ferris, he began with the scientific knowledge that the machine would work. 
and that it would be safe. Mrs. Ferris and the inventor, or I'm sorry, and the reporter, believed that the machine would work on the basis of what the inventor had said. But only after that full ride could it be said of all of them that they had personal, experiential faith. And they were no, noted as being ones who were first on that ride. And their reputation from that time on preceded them. The Bible tells us in this verse that the elders, by faith, obtained a good report. And we don't have the time to read all of Hebrews chapter 11, but it is a tremendous chapter in God's Word. I've actually preached an entire series of messages already through Hebrews chapter 11, but we often refer to this chapter as the great hall of faith. And I believe the elders that are being spoken of in verse 2 are all the elders that are listed here in this very chapter. They're the ones who by faith did incredible things. And by faith, God did wonderful things with their life. And by faith, really, the world around them saw that, witnessed that, and were impacted by that. And by faith, listen, we can do the same thing. Faith that changes and moves and impacts the world isn't just designated to those who are listed in this chapter. We all can live by faith. We can have that same good report of us. I want a good report. How about you? How do we get a good report? Well, you'll see this up on the screen. I've worded it this way. Launch out into the deep and trust God to accomplish great things with you just like those who've gone on before us. You don't get as much accomplished if you don't live with faith. You won't see God do as much if you don't ever launch out into the deep. We're living, I think, in unprecedented times. We're living in times of very deep waters. <laughs> we're living in moments where we're not sure what's going to happen next. I'll say this, launch out. Launch out by faith. And by faith, show that your hope is not in what people say, but in what God says. And follow the Lord. If God's people would just stand up and trust in God, oh, what a testimony we could have in these days. So many are saying so many things right now. And it's interesting because right now, as a pastor, I'm having a lot of people ask me a lot of questions. Pastor, should I do this or should I do that? I will always answer this way. We must do what God wants us to do. I might offer a little practical insight in one direction or the other, uh, but there's a lot of questions that people are having right now. And I'll be honest, they're not easy questions. Questions regarding how do I proceed in, in these days that are uncertain and in these days where we have people really quite honestly um, giving us not a lot of options or not a lot of choices. What does God want us to do? We must know what God wants us to do and only follow the Lord. And here's what's very interesting about it. Uh, there might be some who believe God wants them to do one thing, and there might be another who God want, they believe God wants them to do another thing. Who's right? Only God knows for you what you need to do or not do. Now, that's not true of everything in God's Word. There are some things that are just very simply laid out. Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, okay? Uh, the Ten Commandments make it very clear what we can or cannot do. We can't read the Ten Commandments and say, I don't really feel like God cares much about that one, and uh, so I'm going to go kill my neighbor because he made me really mad yesterday. There are things that are clear in God's Word, but then there are situations we're facing right now and what we must know is, what does God want for me? I'm not ever going to be the voice of God in these matters. I will always say what God's word clearly says, but I will always help people to say and know and understand we, there are things that we just don't have direct answers about that we have to pray and trust God about and don't move on anything until God gives you a peace. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, 
by prayer and supplication. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's the answer. We have to pray and we have to seek God. And I will say this. I have almost always, or I will say I have always, made a wrong decision when I got ahead of God and decided before I had a peace from God. Don't decide until God gives you the go-ahead. Yeah, but pastor said this. If, my, if what I said isn't directly what God says, I, I give you permission to wait until God makes it clear in your heart. My job is not to be the voice of God other than what God has already clearly stated in his word. But there are particular situations and decisions that must be made in your life that I can't make for you. Okay, but my boss, my employer said this. Your real boss is the Lord. And we must listen to God. I, I would never tell you to go out and get yourself fired. I don't think that's wise in most cases. But I will always tell you, you better be listening to the voice of God before anyone else. Because we can only be obedient first and foremost to our God. Well, I'm not sure about what I should do for my child, and I have children that I'm concerned about, and what should I do, and where should I send them to school, and how should I educate them? And these are big, big questions, aren't they? You know what you'll never hear me say? You'll never hear me say that you should send your kids to public school. You'll never hear me say that you should not send your kids to public school. I send three of my children to Christian school right now and one we homeschool, but I will never say you must homeschool your kids or you must put your kids in Christian school. I think that's one of those situations where God has to make it clear in everyone's heart what they must do. And do you know that there's never been a moment that I can think of in our church where we've had one of all the same. I think we've always had a mix of public school, Christian school, and home school. What's right? Only what God makes clear in your heart. We must know what God says. And only follow the voice of God. And sometimes that voice isn't seen on the pages of Scripture. But He convinces us in our heart what we know we must do. Third and finally, faith gives understanding. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. That cuts through a lot of the verbal clutter, doesn't it? That cuts through things like theistic evolution. That cuts through things like, uh, you know, millions and billions of years. It just simply says, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. God spoke it and it came into existence. Don't try to make that make sense because it makes zero sense other than our faith believing that God spoke it into existence. <laughs> Don't try to rationalize that. That's an incredible miracle. And we accept it by faith or we don't. And the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. So faith gives understanding. I find that there can be such a lack of discernment today. And there are some real fools around right now who think that they are wise. Professing themselves to become wise, they're fools. And there are some foolish people. I hope you'll come back tonight because I'm going to be preaching about a foolish guy in the Old Testament. His name was Nabal. And there's a way to deal with a fool. And it's really not what we always think. We sometimes think, well, I'm going to shut that fool up. Or I'm going to put that fool in his place. And we, if we dare try to do that, will become the fool. And in a world in which there is foolishness all around us and foolish words all around us and foolish people all around us, if we're going to be wise... We won't engage. Not all the time. Not in every instance.
Don't get caught up. But let's move forward, not giving attention to those that God already has a plan for, who God can deal with far better than we can. Remember, God made this world. He can take care of the people that are in it. The things which were not made of things which do appear. John 1.3 reiterates this. All things which were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. So we know that God's the first and the last. In that, we know that God created all. Within God's existence, from the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, he brought about the wonderful plan of redemption for you and me by sending his son, Jesus, God in the flesh, to live a perfect sinless life, who was tortured and bled and died, to purchase our redemption, and he proved that he was God, by being crucified, buried, and then rising from the dead three days later, there's not a more perfect story that has ever existed. And it's been presented to us so that we might receive it. And if you have that, you have all you've ever needed, which is Christ and Christ alone. And everything else that he gives us, we just enjoy for what it is. We praise God for what it is. And yes, the world keeps changing. Thankfully, God stays the same. Things are not what they always were. I've been having some fond memories of the 1980s recently. Anyone have fond memories of the 1980s? And uh, sometimes I just wish, man, the 1980s would be so nice. Ronald Reagan and E.T. and Star Wars and uh, no internet and, you know, no devices and riding bikes everywhere and not a lot of rules about anything and just loving life. Well, I, I've got news for you. We're not in the 1980s anymore. We're in the 2020s. But God decided in his providence to put you right here in this point in time, at this place, for this hour. And we can long for the good old days and think about how good they were. To be honest with you, they're not always as good as we thought they were. There were plenty of problems then too. But God has always been good. We can trust him today just like we've always trusted him. And there's more opportunity, I think, today than there's ever been to be a light for the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we do it? Let's choose faith over fear. Don't, don't, in, don't indulge in the fearfulness that so many want you to. Don't become anxious like the rest of the world. We have a life to live and God wants us to live it. Just say amen. You don't have to say it real loud, but say amen if you believe this. Do you believe that God has your days numbered? Amen. amen. Do you believe that he knows when it's your time to go and be with him? Yeah, I do. We want to quickly be sucked into the world's philosophy that somehow we control all that. And how foolish we are. I think, I think if we could be with that cloud of witnesses right now, just looking down thinking, wow, we were dumb when we thought we could control it. And look at all these people down here. They don't have a clue. It's not in our control. Yes, we should be wise. And yes, I don't think we should just throw ca every caution to the wind. But realize something. There are forces at work way beyond our control. There always has been. God is on his throne, and he knows far greater than us. So my not life is not to cower behind everything and be afraid of everything and be scared of every step I take and be afraid to live life. My, my job is to say, God, by faith, I'm going to trust you and live for you every day as you allow me to follow you. Let's do that. Let's live the faith life and choose faith over fear, trusting God and Him alone. Would you pray with me, please? With heads bowed and with eyes closed, I think this message can apply in a lot of different ways. I, I try not to get too specific because, to be honest, our fear is not contained to just one thing. 
There's a variety of things that we become fearful about. But we can trust the Lord, and our job is to choose faith. Maybe you're here watching by way of live stream today, and maybe there's some fearfulness in your heart. I want to encourage you to choose faith. Maybe you're here this morning, and there's some things or some fear that has gripped your heart. And again, I don't think it's always wrong to have some healthy fears of things, but we must trust God. If our fear outweighs our trust or our faith in God, we're out of balance. Believe God. Don't just say that you do, but live it. May people see that. And I hope that people will come to a faith in the Lord themselves because of the faith that we've modeled before them. If you're here and you say, this all sounds great, but I just can't help but live fearful every day, maybe, maybe it's because you need to once and for all place your faith in God alone and trust in Him for salvation. Would you do that today? Would you once and for all call upon Him to save you? You could do so quietly there in your pew. I can't make the decision for you, and I wouldn't try. But if you see that you're a sinner and you know that there's never been a time or a place where you've called upon the Lord and trusted in Him to save your, you from your sin, would you do so now? Quietly in your own heart, call out to God and can, you can say these words to Him, Dear God, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I've broken your law and I repent of my sin. And I ask you to forgive me and to come into my life and to save me. I believe that Jesus is God's son, that he was crucified and died and rose from the grave. With heads bowed and with eyes closed, I wonder if there might be somebody who would say, Pastor, I just prayed that prayer. Once and for all, I put my faith in Jesus Christ. If we're here and we are acknowledging that we've already done that and we've already made that choice, can I ask you, are you living with that same faith every day? Or do we slip into the fear that can grip us and pull us out of God's will and pull us out of where we need to be? And let's not do that. Let's choose faith over fear and allow God to lead us, and guide us as we go. Lord, I ask that you'd help us this morning. We don't have to be loud or vocal about this. We just need to live the life. We just need to live the faith life every day. And I pray that we do that with your strength and with your help. Speak to us in this time of invitation now. We look to you and trust you, and we thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me, please, quietly? I'm going to ask that Margaret begins to play. And as she does, listen, the altar is open this morning. Would you come and would you bring something before the altar? Maybe there's a little bit of fear, some anxiety. Maybe there's something we need to confess before the Lord. Maybe we prayed to receive Christ and we just want to make that known now. Would you come? The Lord loves you and you can trust him and you can put your faith in him. You don't have to live defined by fear. You can be a person of faith. Not just in word, but in deed.
thank you for being here this morning. It's been a blessing to be together, and I pray that you have a wonderful afternoon. I want to encourage you to come back, and we're picking up our series on the life of David, and we're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 25. We're going to learn about that Nabal character, and uh, I think there's a lot of Nabals today. Uh, you don't deal with a Nabal by being a Nabal, or Nabal, or whatever they call him. You've got to be a David, and the right kind of David, and an Abigail to deal with Nabal properly. Okay? You might say, I want to learn more, then come back tonight. You might say, I don't want to learn anymore, come back tonight anyway, you need to be here, okay? And I hope you'll be here this evening. We're looking forward to a great time, and uh, thank you, Trent, for catching me. And when I was getting ready to fall back, I heard him say, just fall, and I realized, okay, <laughs> he's got me. I, knew, I know he has me, so amen. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Brother Jimmy Newton, would you dismiss us, please?